everyone, Joel Hansen here. Today we're outside in Tapas at Embrujo uh, to do their paella challenge. So this is an absolutely massive paella. It looks very, very delicious though. Uh, it could weigh up to like 12 pounds. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna give you some more information here momentarily. So paella is like a rice dish, a Spanish rice dish, Spanish place, lovely. Uh, so we have shrimp, we have chicken, uh, we also have mussels in the paella, so a really nice seafood. Um, then we have one hour to complete the paella. And if we do, we get a $100 gift card. Uh, the price of the meal is $100. Um, now, if we do not complete the challenge, just pay $100. You don't get the lovely gift card. Now, if you beat the record, and I'm lucky enough to be invited, actually, to try this challenge for the first time. Um, so, just before the open, we're going to do this. It'll be really good for the video. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be the first one to I, hopefully beat it. Hopefully, you know, set a record. So, I'll go nice and slow so other people can always, you know, get in there and get that win. Uh, but yeah, basically, so a paella sounds very, very delicious. So a true Spanish paella. Always, you guys like to see different cuisines. This restaurant here is actually the oldest tapas restaurant too um, in Toronto. They've been at this location for about 20 years, um, but then they've actually been in operation here in Toronto since like 1972. So it's been a long time. Uh, very well established restaurant and I've heard absolutely great things so I'm super excited let's go on in eat some food let's go see what happens so here we are with the paella so it's absolutely massive like I don't think you guys can conceptualize this the like the camera is not doing it justice the angle but this thing is giant absolutely massive this thing feeds I don't know how many people but it looks absolutely delicious so we got lots of shrimp two pounds of shrimp two pounds of chicken two pounds of mussels Obviously all of the rice, we have peas, we have uh, kind of tomatoes, garlic, we have all the fixings. Saffron, it just smells so delicious, can't wait. Um, so yeah, basically that's about it. Let's just get started here. Um, they said the lemons, um, they're all just like for, you know, appeasing, lovely looking decoration. I do not have to eat the lemons, uh, but I'm more welcome to use them. So yeah, about that, let's get started and uh, wish us luck. My first time having a real Spanish paella. I'm gonna start with the mussels, then I got to uh, de-shell the shrimp, and we'll kind of go from there. So with that, I think we'll get started. I think the restaurant's here. Yeah, we are ready. All right, so we'll count, let's say the count of five, four, three, two. I also, today I actually have a big spoon for once, everybody, so we're good to go. All right, one, let's get started on these mussels here. I think, I think you can see my hands. Oh, damn, woo, that flavor. Mm. That is delicious. I'm now very excited for this dish. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the best way to... Mmm. Okay. Damn. Okay. I thought I'd pay it before. I've never had it like this. That was delicious. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where today we're at Tapas at Embrujo in Toronto, Ontario. Here to do a Spanish paella challenge. So this was not only like a really cool food challenge, not only did I have an excellent, you know, time at this environment, but I learned a lot. The people there coming from Spain taught me so much. So I guess traditionally a paella, which is a rice dish, it was made with snails or rabbit. I guess like traditionally back in, you know, however many years ago, people would be out like on a farm and then when it was time for lunch, they'd make a big paella in which they would have like rabbit because that's what you could get out in fields I guess or you know if you were close to I guess the water you'd be able to easily get access to snails and then you'd add in the rice the spices and whatever else so it's kind of notably known for being like a big huge pot communal pot and uh, traditionally again kind of cooked over a fire again that really doesn't happen nowadays but just like the idea and the history behind this dish was so fascinating and interesting to learn. Um, so yeah, paella used to be a farmer's dish, you know, now has become what we consider a luxury and a delicacy. Kind of funny how things happen like that. Like, and as an example, did you know lobs lobsters used to be considered a poor man's food? Pretty crazy how things change. So we're jumping in this paella, so absolutely massive. We had, like I said, two pounds of shrimp, two pounds of chicken, two pounds of mussels by itself, plus all the peas, um, which was like a whole bag of peas. We had all the different onions and tomatoes and everything which we put in it, but and then all the rice, not to mention the rice, geez. So anyway, it's a, it's a pretty big one. Um, absolutely delicious challenge though. 
the flavors from that first bite were just like nothing I've ever had. I've had paellas before when I've been traveling, um, such as in Cuba. Uh, however, that being said, I have never had one like this. Um, not only was there a load of seafood, great like meat to paella or rice ratio, but just like, oh, just I don't know how to describe it. Just like it was amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so it was also really cool them to uh, allow me to do this challenge just before they opened as I do express to the majority of individuals and have said before an empty restaurant or a quiet or restaurant at least at a quieter time is actually better for the video because then you can hear me talking about the food better um, you know there's no loud copyrighted music in the background so everything worked perfectly and they were very welcoming. All right just over three minutes in exceptionally delicious I'm absolutely loving the flavors just can't describe it it's perfection but throw us through the muscles oh perfect thank you so much so this paella dish is like 65 centimeters across which is probably like i don't know maybe like 26 27 28 inches um, not to mention that this dish was made to serve like 10 people. It's a very, very large portion. Um, and there are certain foods and certain times where I find the camera doesn't encapsulate the true size of the dish. And this was one of them. Like this was a very big dish. As I was watching them make it, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty dang big. With this challenge as well, you know, besides the actual volume of itself, um, you can tell that it takes a little bit of time to kind of go through the shelled seafood. Obviously there's the mussels, uh, which I mean you could obviously approach eating them in other ways. I decided to do the mussels first. Then there's the shrimp. Um, you also deshell the shrimp. So, you know, it's my idea, or at least I was thinking once I was able to get through the seafood, things would probably move a bit quicker. I can eat rice and rice dishes very, very quick. Um, so that's kind of what I was hoping or banking on. Um, because, you know, this did take quite a bit of time. However, that being said, it wasn't going like a 10 out of 10 speed. And I, by all means, like I said, I was very, very, very much enjoying this challenge. Like, it was, it was phenomenal. About five minutes in, we're through the mussels. Now I gotta get through these shrimp. They do have a shell on them, so this might take a little bit. But besides that, I think that's pretty much all the information I have. Again, just very delicious. I'm really hoping we could get this win. This is undoubtedly the world's biggest paella challenge. Yes, it is. I have looked everywhere on YouTube. I have not been able to find any actual paella challenge bigger. Yes, there are bigger paellas out there, but not as a food challenge. So. I'll let you enjoy the rest of this video as we take on the world's biggest paella challenge. Um, so glad that I was able to try this, uh, you know, kind of this dish of Spanish cuisine. So honestly, thank you everybody for encouraging me to try these other cuisines. I'm glad, uh, or I'm hoping that you will enjoy me being able to try these other cuisines. And uh, at that, you know, keep the recommendations coming everybody. Let me know down below what the, is the next kind of cuisine that I should try out. So at that everybody, thank you so much. Let's get to the rest of the video. Let's see what happens and hopefully we can get this first win become the first winner of this undefeated world's biggest paella challenge. Shrimp are very delicious too. They really absorb the flavor of the paella. Which tastes fantastic. Still not quite done the shrimp. See ya. I mean, I guess you could technically eat the shells, but I'm just not about that life. Ten and a half minutes in. 
<laughs> almost through the shrimp. I think. Lots of seafood in them. Very delicious. Definitely well worth the money. All right, I think that's all the shrimp, or at least most of the shrimp. There's probably a few stragglers in there. About 12 and a half minutes in. So now, oh no, there's still more shrimp. I lied. Okay, but then I... Should be able to move through everything a bit quicker. So I got my big spoon. Some people are talking us through the window. All right, oh, no, there's still lots of shrimp. Anyway, let's get started on the paella. It looks really, really good. I got a shrimp, but that is damn delicious. I'm just about as authentic as you can get. Because you're from Spain, right? Yeah. So when you have a Spanish man creating you a Spanish dish, mm. you can't ask for much more than that. Hopefully you get some seconds. Mm. I will. And that's the... Mm. Like I just said there, that's like the kind of caramelized rice on the pan. quite all the lemons, but they definitely had a really nice flavor. I can taste it. I'm going to it. Absolutely delicious. Just over 18 minutes in. Oh. No shortage of food though. It's very delicious. There's a lot of it. Mm. Definitely moving a little quicker without the shells. <sighs> but no complaints. None at all. I can't say enough about those flavors though. Mm. It is rich, it is moist, floral. Lots of meat in it though, definitely get my proteins for the day.
Alright. Last bite. Okay, this thing is absolutely delicious. I literally can honestly say I enjoy it starting to finish. The flavors are absolutely outstanding. Challenge. absolutely loved it the size of it was really really nice again I I'm actually I the flavor the flavors and taste blew my mind I'm not gonna lie just so exceptional um, the definitely the shrimp the muscle took a little bit to kind of you know get through the shells but everything was cooked perfectly tasted great chicken was moist the shrimp were very moist that thick dish was so 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 flavored so yeah and that everybody thank you for watching hope you enjoy it um, so for that we get a meal for free which is pretty cool but at that Till next time, say happy, I'll be hungry. Wait, do you, do you guys have dessert? <laughs> we do, we do. What's up? <laughs> We're eating dessert. So let's eat dessert and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And here we are back. We got dessert. Uh, I'm, I, my pronunciations, I'm just butchering it. So we're going to have Monsieur Jose tell Joe, me about it. Oops. Joe, what you have there is a, it's called Tarta de Santiago. Uh, it's basically a traditional lemon and almond. Nice. I broke it. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm just gonna. Is this like a, oh, this yes, is this a wafer. wafer? Wafer, beautiful. All right. So le lemon and almond. Lemon and almond. That's the base. I dig. I dig. All right. Well, let's give it a go. Tart de Santiago is Tiago. Sorry for my pronunciation, everybody. It looks good though. Oh wow, this is gonna be a whole, like this is gonna sound like a horrible explanation, but it tastes like lemon, and you can tell there's like almonds in it. Duh, but no seriously, that is delicious. Mm. Beautiful soft lemon taste as if you did have like a lemon tart or something, but you get the textures. So it's a little like crumbly textures. That's from that almond bit, and it just adds this beautiful, soft, and texturous journey of flavor. Mm. I approve. It's actually like, it's very nice lemon too. Therefore, I can conclude that everything here is delicious. Because everything I've had is fantastic. So that everybody, now I can say thank you. Very much appreciate it. So tapas at Embrujo would definitely recommend. Right, um, kind of the Dawn Valley. Parkway, Danforth Avenue. That, you know what to do, everybody. I just said to say happy, early, hungry. Happy you. Of course, have a lovely day. Until next time, eat some good food. There is the CN Tower. Definitely the most iconic building within Toronto and Ontario. It's kind of like the equivalence of, I don't know, I'll call it Canada's Empire State Building or something, but you get the idea. It's a big, tall building that you can see stuff from. And not a bad downtown view of the water there. Up there from the rooms, pretty nice. Got the waterfront down there and Lake Ontario or Erie or whatever the heck it is. Lake Ontario, the stuff you're not supposed to go in, but not too bad, not too shabby. People swim in it. Well, then it's full of the coal and stuff, but I'm gonna go on down there and check out this this waterfront in the town. Good stuff, big old city. There, it, and there's a, a there's a great big uh, picnic table. As you can tell, compared to the people, it's massive. The people are not as small. And here we have the gorgeous waterfront. Very very nice your sunset and all that stuff. Yeah, Toronto Island is where people go party and swim and stuff. This is pretty. Very nice.
That's pretty too down there. Nice and pretty. I've been here before you And here we are down at the Toronto waterfront. It's actually very, very pleasant. The water looks surprisingly blue and clear and it's a nice evening. I have no complaints. So yeah, not bad. There's uh, some ducks, that's pretty much the only wildlife. Um, I did see some weird looking uh, Toronto squirrels back there. I might have to try to grab some in a, in a video in a little bit, but uh, yeah, no complaints. Some more beautiful water front at sunset. Got some wild animals up there. Got some wild animals right here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we got some uh, midnight, mid late night, afternoon, whatever snacks right here. There's one right on the boardwalk. I'll catch it here in a moment. Yeah, like you can actually see right through the clear to the water. It's surprisingly clear. I thought it was going to be, I've heard it's quite polluted, so I was, I was thinking it might be a little more, uh, you know. Okay. Thick, yeah, that's, that's good, put it. And then look, here's the, here's the free food, free snacks. Hi, duck. They're thinking I'm gonna feed them here. He's pretty pumped. Little does he know that we're about to feed on them. Cool, and there's a little waterfall thing and whatever else. Toronto. More purdy sun scenery waterfront. But interestingly, this is not what Toronto's known for. Toronto's known for its city. It's not known for its waterfront at all. Like, not at least in this capacity. And this is probably the prettiest I've seen it too, to be fair, so. And I don't know if you guys realize this, but I always um, Photoshop it, edit it so my sister actually looks tall. But as you can tell, as she sits on this picnic table, she's actually very small. She stands about two feet tall. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. This is just a massive, absolutely massive picnic table. As my sister is a full. Can't even reach the bottom. No, she, you can't. So this is what a six feet tall, six foot tall woman looks like on this picnic table. So. As you can imagine, it's quite large. So for those who've been following me for a while, they know that like bell peppers are my favorite vegetables. I do prefer like the multicolored one, the fancy, you know, the yellow, the red, but I'm aware with green ones. And I literally just eat them like apples, like here in Toronto, eating bell peppers. Great way to get your fiber. They're so portable. I find them absolutely delicious. So, whatever it takes. Here in Kensington Market, this is a part in Old Toronto, so it's kind of like a unique market where they have a whole bunch of kind of boutique stores and some weird stores and restaurants. So I'll show you a bit around. I guess I've never actually had this area on a video before, but that is now going to change. Is it good? I think I had some tacos. Tacos El Pastor. El Mexicano. Alright, so check out these candles. This is one of a kind and I'm not sure if I want to smell these or not. Um, so here we have a Nancy Pelosi uh, scented candle. We then have a Trump scented candle, a Justin Trudeau scented candle, and an Obama scented candle. So let's smell all of these. 
Um, so Nancy Pelosi, let's see what she smells like. Because I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm curious, that just sounds wrong, but. She kind of smells like uh, chocolate maybe? A little bit of a chocolate thing going on. That's, that's quite pleasant. I smell Obama. Again, I don't know if I really want to smell Obama or not, but I might as well. Okay, Obama smells... I think it's supposed to be Hawaiian scent, because that's where he was born, in Hawaii. Um, let's smell Justin Trudeau. Now this, I know, is going to stink. Ugh. Trudeau smells horrible. Yeah, he stinks. But the candle smells like, uh... Kind of like vanilla. Ha! Trudeau's vanilla. And then, uh, let's smell Trump. Because Trump even has his hair on it. Which is kind of interesting. <laughs> what?! Oh my gosh, this is hilarious. It smells like bacon. Interesting. Apparently, Trump smells like bacon. Interesting. So yeah, there you go. I've smelt a lot of uh, the world's famous politicians right now. Who would have known? A very unique spot they always have here in Kensington Market is this car. So it's literally a car which is made into a planter. It stays here year-round. It's interesting. Uh, in that shop, I also bought some candies. So, believe it or not, I... A lot of people don't know this, actually. I don't know if I've told many people or I don't know if I've told my YouTube. But I love and used to love sour candies, like love sour things. Uh, in fact, I used to eat so many warheads at a time that I would burn holes in my mouth, like the roof of my mouth, like I would eat like 10 of these at a time and my mouth would be bloody by the end of it. But I got a toxic waste in a watermelon and then a toxic waste in pineapple passion fruit. So I will also try those out. And I also bought some European um, Cadbury dairy milk that people always freak out about. So, and I've had it before. It's not bad, but that'll be, uh, you know, I'll sh show you that as well. It's supposed to be like, I don't know, milkier and stuff. But anyway, here's what a watermelon toxic waste looks like. And toxic waste are basically just like warheads. If I can get it out. Yeah, it just goes to college. So let's turn around and go back down. We go down the other side. Of course it's sour. Well, sour's on the outside though, pretty much. And then once you're through the malic acid on the outside, and it's not sour anymore. And it's just sweet. But I do like the watermelon flavor. It's not bad. Then we'll try this other one, pineapple passion fruit. It's called a fusion. That one opened easier. So this one's a little more sour. A light pineapple. Light, I almost described kind of like a lychee candy flavor. But apparently it's passion fruit. Not bad. Was that carrot something? Carrot, coconut. Looks good. Chocolate. Can't get more traditional than that, eh? More unique businesses, lots of graffiti. Here's a whole spray painted apartment. Lots of colors. Some mannequins up on the balcony who are naked with masks on. Some uh, little clothing shops and food places and all the above. All the above. Although you've seen it many times in a lot of my videos, Young and Dundas Square. Very iconic and whatever place in Toronto. It's a ripoff of Times Square, let's be honest, but yeah, it's not bad. It's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. 
Um, Rogers Center, where the uh, Blue Jays play, Toronto's uh, MLB baseball team. And then we have the CN Tower, which is very, 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 very tall. It is the uh, tallest building around Toronto. And there's a little ledge, this that like ledge, kind of darker ledge. You can actually uh, book like a thing where you're strapped in it and you walk out around on the ledge. It's pretty cool. It's like 300 plus bucks. And we changed rooms. Got a better view. Yeah, it's got a better view. Yeah.